Hello and welcome to another episode of It's Just Our Opinion. Today marks the 30th show that we've had since we started this thing. Started it July the 1st. Believe it or not, July the 1st. Now we hadn't done every week. We've skipped a few weeks in there trying to get the thing rolling. But I appreciate all of you that watch it, that share it with your friends, uh, everybody that's liked it, you know, we have over 1,100 people now that's went and liked our page. Uh, if you would share it with your friends uh, and ask them to like it, we may get that on up there to three or four or who knows, 44,000. But anyway, it's, it's up to a little over 1,100 now. People like it. Last week was our most viewed show. Believe it or not, we had over 13,000 views when we went out to Fagerman Farm and interviewed them about their sheep farm. Uh, people loved it, uh, over 13,000 views. And, and of course, the week before that, we actually had our granddaughter Izzy on and got over 8,500 views in. So, you know, it keeps growing, it keeps growing, and I appreciate you keep sharing it and uh, let your friends know about it. Like I say, it's, it's something we enjoy doing. Uh, you know, we, we're not making a lot of money at it, and so far, uh, my wife's always quick to tell me that it costs us money every week when we do it. But but we have fun doing it, and we're getting to share uh, our opinions and getting the people to see different things out in the community. Uh, a lot of folks would have never heard of, of the farm, Fagerman Farm, if we had not done that. But it went all over the state, and like I say, over, over 13,000 people uh, viewed it. So thank you. Just continue to keep watching, continue to keep sharing, and... And who knows, this thing may grow into somewhere where I may be on a late night TV show someday. But anyway, thank you again for, for watching the show and spreading it for us. I know everybody's so tired of hearing about the COVID-19. I mean, it's been here now for several months, and every time you turn the news on, that's all you hear about. So, so you know, we're not going to really talk a whole lot about it tonight. I think I think you get enough of that from the TV stations and stuff. So we don't really want to get into that a whole lot. But there are some effects of this COVID-19 that, that I think we need to discuss. You know, one of the things is, is the restaurants. You know, restaurants here in Alabama didn't get to open back up uh, for people to come inside uh, last week. And, and so, you know, we still have to call ahead or pull up and wait and you got you know you got drive throughs and you got carry outs but you know I have really noticed that the restaurants have really stepped up during this thing now my wife and I we go out you know fairly regular and you know we'll call ahead so we don't just have to sit there and wait and wait but I don't know why we do that because we actually eat in the parking lot we sit there and eat in the parking lot just like just like we're in the restaurant uh, we do that because we don't want to go and get something and drive all the way back home and it be cold and us have to warm it up. But you're going to do that, we might as well stay at home. But I've noticed, I have noticed, and my wife and I, we have talked a lot about this the last few times we've been out. The restaurants are, when you order something, are really piling on the food. We went to a chicken restaurant uh, just, well, a few days ago, and I ordered six-piece chicken fingers. I love them, sweet potato fries. My wife, she don't eat near as much as I do. She only ordered a four piece. Well, I ended up with eight pieces of chicken and she ended up with six pieces of chicken and more fries than you could ever eat. And so of course we brought, we brought the leftovers home and uh, you know we, we just couldn't eat that much food that they piled on. They didn't charge us extra, done great. We went tonight uh, out to a, to a steakhouse and of course I didn't get steak I got chicken again and she got chicken but we got more than we ever asked for more than we could eat we actually had to bring some home then you know now normally when we go to these very same restaurants we sit there and we think after we get through eating you know I wished I'd ordered a large and uh now you can tell by looking at me most of the time I do order a large but but you know the carryouts they have really stepped up to the plate and, and added more food for the carryouts. We uh, we done a, a barbecue sandwich the other day and went through this, this barbecue, and I'm not going to advertise for them here, and I don't want them to you know, to have a crowd where they couldn't serve everybody if I started advertising for them here for free. But the, the barbecue was packed so much 
I mean, it was just, it was hard to eat it. You know, it was just so big. So uh, when you go to the restaurants and you, and, you, and you order out and stuff, be sure and tip these folks well. Restaurants are struggling right now. They are struggling because they can't get customers inside. And a lot of people just don't do the drive throughs But I'm telling you, they're stepping up to the plate and giving you plenty of food when you do come through. You know, another thing, everybody's waiting on the barber shops to open. You can tell, you know, I, it wouldn't hurt me a bit in the world to have a haircut. Uh, and, and, you know, everybody's wanting them to open up. I, I see people all the time that, that need a haircut bad. And, you know, I don't say nothing to them because I know they're probably waiting on the barber shops to open herself. And, and uh, so, you know, a lot of these ladies and stuff you'll see them now starting to wear little hats when they go outside and stuff and that's so that you, you can't see the gray and the, and the hair they need the roots fixed and stuff so you know it's been a burden on them i'm hoping i'm hoping the next few weeks now that we're gonna have uh the barber shops open back up the beauty shops and uh you know our daughter uh patty and we've had her on the show here several months ago is is a beautician uh she's she's got people just booked up waiting for her to open people calling wanting her to do it at home but no don't do it we're not doing it at home we're going by the rules and so you know we we just we just know people all over that's hurting and so uh, i know everybody's going to be glad when all of that is over but now one of the good things that did happen last week is the beaches the beaches are opened up again now you know, we, we see on Facebook people we know uh, just, I mean, they're flocking to the beaches like they've never been to the beach before. Uh, we was made a trip down to Prattville here last weekend and stopped to get gas, and there was a carload of people right beside us. And, and, and you know, I, I just, a bunch of women in there, and they was packed. And I, so I just asked them, I said, I bet y'all going to the beach. And sure enough, they was. They was heading to the beach probably going to stay all week because, you know, school's out and uh, a lot of people ain't working and all that. So the beaches are open. So if you go, be sure and, and spread out, you know, and uh, don't, don't, don't sneeze on nobody. But the beaches are open. So, hey, it's time to fill that car up with gas and head toward the beach. Just be safe when you do. You know, I've been watching some shows on Sunday here the last few weeks that's come on this it's about Michael Jordan. It's called The Last Dance. Now, I'm going to be the first to say Michael Jordan was the best basketball player of all time. Now, you can come back and say Magic Johnson or Wilt Chamber, any of these folks. But I'm telling you, Michael Jordan is the best of all time. But now, he's not a role model. If you watch his show, you may want to mute it because there's a lot of vulgar language in it. You know, we just like to turn it down and just watch him play basketball. Now, I, I grew up in the Michael Jordan era. Uh, you know, I loved to watch him play. I mean, it was hardly a Bulls game that come on TV that I wasn't sitting there watching it because he was that good. And I remember him at North Carolina. You know, he, he was good in college. Uh, you know, but, but Michael Jordan, the last dance, I, 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 would, I would encourage you to watch it if you want to see some good basketball but also, if you know, if your kids are around, mute that thing so they can't hear it. Because you know, you got him and Scottie Pippen and 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 even Dennis Rodman and and Steve Kerr. All those people, you know, they never claim to be role models. So they they do a lot of talking that that you and I wouldn't be talking. But they're great at basketball. So turn that thing down and just watch it. It to me, I just I just love to watch him play. I. You know, I, I even watched him play some games when he went on to the Washington Wizards. He wasn't the same Michael then. He just didn't look right in that light blue either. So, but but Jordan was the best of all time. Well, I want to show you something here that, that I got out of my chicken pen today. A lot of people, especially y'all city folks, uh, that don't, don't raise up on a farm, have never seen a double yolk egg. Now, I hope you can see the difference in these right here. Now, they the, this hens, they usually lay them like this, but this one grunted enough to have this one. Can you imagine the pain that that hen went through getting that double yolk? That is a big egg right there. Now, I know a lot of y'all have probably seen some big double yolk eggs, and I know there's some of you sitting there thinking, now, Ray, that's probably a duck egg. 
Well, if that's a duck egg, it got in my chicken pen somehow. But it's not. It's a double yolk, big old, big old egg. I don't believe that chicken will lay for a few more days. You know, it's kind of like giving birth to twins, probably. She's she probably going to be just kind of out of business for a few days. But it's amazing. Every now and then we run across these. We, we don't have a lot of chickens. I think we got six hens and, and three three roosters. So, uh, you know, they're a lot of fun to watch and stuff. But that's that's the first double yolk we've got this year. But we've had them before, and it's really neat. Now, I know a lot of you uh, know what this Sunday is. Coming up this Sunday is Mother's Day. Now, I know you can't load her up and take her to the finest restaurant and take her inside and and and, and feed her like you want to you can feed her in the parking lot but mother's day of all days we need to remember our mothers you know without our mothers we couldn't be here and and so you know the mothers are, are always the backbone of every family and and so you know i i appreciate uh uh my mother-in-law, I don't have a mother now. My mother's been dead now for several years, and I sure do miss her every day. And, of course, my wife's a mother. But, you know, treat your mothers good. Take them out. Uh, take them flowers. Take them, take them in a card and show them how special they are. And now some folks probably ain't getting to see their mothers because it's COVID. So if, you, if you're not getting to socialize with them a whole lot, Go by and get you a mask and put on and go and see them. Don't, don't let this COVID-19 keep you away from seeing your mother on Mother's Day. I mean, uh, you know, that's a very special day. And, and like I say, uh, mothers, mothers are the backbone of every family. And, and so we need to honor them on that day. So next Sunday, this coming Sunday, show your mother that you love her. Tell her how much you love her and show her. Well, thank you again for watching the show. I appreciate you tuning in. Like I say, this is our 30th show. I hope you'll share it. I hope you'll continue to watch it. Uh, tell your friends and neighbors about it. Now, we've said a lot of stuff here today, but everything I've said, just my opinion. <laughs>